Hi, this is Cheryl Araxas Three Productions, and I would like to present to you Black History of a Female Violinist, an Autobiography in Retrospect. I am the black female violinist which I am about to speak. My story began about sixteen and a half years ago from this point, and even longer when my brain switched to right brain more than twenty years ago. Being a chemist, I had always been left brain and intellectual. The chemist part was a good thing because I sometimes likened myself to Alexander Borendine. He was also a chemist turned musician. My life before I switched to using right brain had, and still is to a certain degree, in eruption. I had gone through tremendous life changes. And somewhere around 1992, one day, my brain decided to go right and urged me to go over to the piano and play as it came out of me. From that point on, it was all she wrote. I rediscovered something that I had lost as a child in school where my creativity had been suffocated. It was at this point I started composing more fluently. I started with piano as I had had lessons as a child. I was attracted to the violin at a very, very young age, maybe eight years or so, or even younger, as my godmother, Jean Kahn, had two violins that I used to gaze at in the living room. I would go and open the case and look at them. I did not know how to ask my parents and maybe I did make a minor forgotten request. Part 1 of my autobiography. Hi, this is Cheryl Araxis, Three Productions, and this is part two of my autobiography. Upon a broken marriage, I had constructed a hand-built harp, which I later on played and still played when I returned back to my place of birth. I attended Peabody Institute for a short period of time for harp. In 1997, I went to Ireland. For personal reasons, and attended a concert in which I saw Sharon of the Corps play her electric violin. She was my first inspiration to come back home and pick up the violin and play my first notes in tune on a fifty dollar three quarter violin without any assistance. I did have a violin videotape which was of little help. Practically all of what I learned in techniques, etc., 98% came from constant struggle and discovery of what I could do on the violin. Any technical articles, including masternay, forms, and reading in between the lines gave me some clues. I was constantly experimenting with techniques, accessories, and myself. I would also like to mention that Hilary Hahn has been a great influence to me when I first heard her play. I graduated from the three-quarter violin to a four-four kneeling violin, but something in me knew that the kneeling was not what I wanted to hear. So I went to a local violin maker for a violin. From that point I went through a series of cheap violins and upgrades. My inner ear was telling me that I needed concert level. I then proceeded to request assistance for this, but to date am still unfunded. The search goes on. In the interim, in 1998, I produced my first CD, Past Echoes, devoid of any violin. Then in 2000, I produced Angels in the Mist, which contained Gallic Kildara, 
my first violin recording and Luna Lament, which was cell which is cello. Before I produced my first CD, I had an audio vision in which I heard music in 3D dimensions surrounding me on all sides, and so vibrant I was astounded. I knew that music was my calling. Part 3 of my autobiography. In my search, I investigated rosins, bows, strings, humidifiers, carbon fiber, and bridges. I decided then, around 2006, to make my own violin, the first of which I called my monstrosity, and it is very much out of alignment. In 2008, I made Formula X violin, and in, and in 2013, my best inven invention in violin making. I taught myself to compose and play classical music. I have had no formal training. What I have done and do is against the odds considering the illness and obstacles that life presented me. I composed a seven-page rhapsody, Beautiful Golden Moon Rhapsody, in 2010 before I made my third violin in 2013. I also composed a mini concerto, the first composition called Throne of the Nightingale, which has no written notes because of some confusion about getting help with the notes. In 2010, I decided to bite the bullet and write seven pages of notes for Beautiful Golden Moon Rhapsody, which proved difficult, even though I had note reading ability. Today, I do many violin recordings on my own for YouTube, and continue to do the work that God intended me to do. I have not written all of my string history, but have provided what I feel gives a history a violin for black history. I have written this because I am still living, not because I am about to die. Thank you. Hi, this is Cheryl Araxis 3 Productions and uh, I would like to do a demo today um, on my experimental violin playing Sardis. Uh, that spells C Z A R D A S, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. But uh, I would like to do a sound sample on my demo violin, which I've been working on, and uh, I think the work will probably be continue on it uh, uh, based upon uh, my health. Uh, but uh, I will uh, strive to continue to see if I can improve it. Uh, once again, I will do a demo. Um, on my experimental violin, Sardis. <laughs> 